in the early 60s, when the efficient market hypothesis was developed, the basic idea there was just because you like a company doesn't mean you invest in the company's stock. Okay, now why is that? Well, the reason is that everybody else already knows that that's a good company and they already would have invested and that the, and the, everybody's desire to invest would drive the stock price up, right, to what economists like to call the fair market value of the company, given all the information of how good the company is. And so there, the great insight there is the return that you get investing in a company is determined by the riskiness of the company, not how good the company is. So when this hypothesis was developed, and it was a pretty radical hypothesis at the time, because before that, people were naively saying, no, 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 good companies is a good investment. The person who's responsible for the efficient market hypothesis, Eugene Farmer, he turned around and said, I'm going to show you why, how powerful this hypothesis is. I'm going to show you the very people who claim they can pick stocks can't. And the way I'm going to show you this is I'm going to look at the return of, of uh, mutual fund managers. So managers of actively managed mutual funds who advertise they can pick stocks. And what he found was the return of those mutual funds, in particular the return to investors in those mutual funds, was no different than throwing darts at the stock market. And from then onwards, people began, had this impression that mutual fund managers do no better than monkeys. And it's called, you know, monkey investing is, is often a name for this. Well, there are a couple things wrong. The first thing that strikes you as odd about this view of the world, that all these mutual fund managers are being paid and yet have no skill, is it violates the most important principle of microeconomics. When an undergraduate steps into his microeconomics lecture for the first time, the first thing that, he, that an undergraduate learns is something called rents and competition. The idea being that only people with a skill in short supply are able to make economic rents. Another way of saying are able to make money. If you don't have a skill in short supply, then everybody competes with you and there are no rents, right? So we look at mutual fund managers. What do we see? Well, we see mutual fund managers who are amongst the most highly paid members of society, making money without having any skill. It'd be equivalent to saying anybody could become a mutual fund manager, or maybe you just have to be lucky and you become a mutual fund manager. You have no particular skill and you earn tons of money. It just seems odd, okay? That's the first problem. The second problem is more fundamental. Let's go back to the, the good companies. The reason good companies are not good investments is again, this idea of competition. Everybody knows it's a good company, everybody invests, that drives the stock price up. The same principle can be applied to mutual funds. So we have a mutual fund which everybody thinks has a very skilled manager. And as a result, this mutual fund is making what we call a positive alpha. So what I mean by a positive alpha is you're beating the market. The alpha is the measure of how much you're beating the market by. So, so the, we, what we find is that the mutual fund has a positive alpha. Well, everybody's going to want to invest in that mutual fund. Everybody wants a positive alpha. And so you get a, the, an inflow of capital into the fund. Now, the more capital the manager has to ma manage, the harder it is for the manager to beat the market. Simple intuition is, when you, the bigger the trade you have, the more you move the price against you when you go to trade. And so as the capital flows in, the alpha of the manager goes down. Funds will keep flowing in until what happens? People no longer want to invest. When do they no longer want to invest? When the return they get in the mutual fund is the same as their next best alternative investment opportunity. In other words, the market. So when the return of the mutual fund hits the return of the market and the alpha is zero, people stop investing. Now let's think about what this means. It means that no matter the return the manager makes in the market doesn't measure his skill level. Up to now, what we've used is the return to investors to measure the skill of the manager. What if we now instead used the uh, amount of money the manager makes 
to uh, measure the skill of the manager. Now, that actually isn't the whole story because you could imagine that not only does the manager make money for himself, but maybe out of the goodness of his heart, he also makes money for investors. Or alternatively, maybe the manager is a charlatan and he has no skill, but he takes money from investors. So what does it mean to make money for investors? It means that you provide a positive alpha to investors. And what does it mean take money from investors? It means you have and the investors earn a negative alpha. They invest in the mutual fund, and the return on the mutual fund is less than the return they could have got in the market portfolio. So if we really want to measure the skill of the manager, what we have to measure is the total amount of money the manager makes for himself, plus any money he makes for investors, or if he, or if he takes money from investors, we subtract that. So what is that? That turns out to be the fee that he makes, plus the alpha, multiplied by the total assets under management. Or another way of saying the same thing, the gross alpha, which is the alpha before fees times the size of the fund. If we use that measure to measure managerial ability, what do we find? What you find is the average mutual fund manager is highly skilled. The average mutual fund manager adds approximately $2 million a year managing a fund. If mutual fund managers were just throwing darts and picking stocks, there are obviously going to be some mutual fund managers that by pure luck would have picked good stocks. So the question is, if you just look at the data, you're always going to find skilled managers or managers that have done well. The question is, how do we know if that's skill? The way we know that that skill is, we take the managers that have done well in one year and we look how they do in the following year. Because if you're just lucky in one year, there's no reason why you're going to be lucky again in the next year. And so if it's just luck that's driving performance, what you should find is it will not be persistent. What you find is, is if you use this measure of skill, we can predict performance out as long as 10 years. That's highly unlikely to be generated by luck. And so the most logical explanation is that managers themselves have skill, and that skill is clearly persistent. Music